When we say we're pouring one out for the homies, we're usually referring to the act of remembering those that we've lost, those that have come before us that have moved on. Now, the reason why I'm referring this is because for a long time, airsoft companies that specialize in airsoft snipers have been trying to put the old VSR-10 out to pasture for quite some time now. Just like how the NFL has been trying to put Tom Brady into retirement, but it seems like just all the time, the old goat manages to stay relevant and dominate. Well, both Brady and the VSR-10. So it comes to no surprise that every time that there's a new sniper rifle on the block, we always try to compare it to the VSR-10. How does it perform? What is its stability? How does it stack up in terms of usability? And of course, what's the upgrade path like? And it's because of this that it seems like every time these guns come out, they're trying to beat the VSR-10 in, well, being a VSR-10 with a few reinforcements here, a few modernizations there, but at the end of the day, it's still just a VSR-10. Circling back to the porn one out analogy, because Silverback has made a bold statement. The successor to the VSR-10, the natural evolution of how it would, nay, should end up. Today, we're gonna take a peek at the Silverback TAC 41P sniper rifle. The TAC 41P, if I were to tell you that this was a project from Silverback, the famed purveyors of all things bullpup, such as the SRS, the HTI, and the elusive MDR, I know it's not a sniper rifle, you would think that I was spreading some kind of internet fake news. Look at it. Does it look like a bullpup? I don't think so. It's like those gun memes about unbullpupping your gun. This is it. It's like, ha! Unbullpups your silver back sniper rifle. There it is. This is a very interesting development from Silverback, and it's not because it's not a bullpup, but rather this is their original design. It's not based on any specific real steel firearm out there. However, I can see that it takes some inspiration from certain places here and there. I just want to address this right in the open. I know to some purists, you may think, well, what's the appeal of this gun if it's not necessarily based on anything in the real world? To them, I would say, number one, this is their own unique design that has a lot of merit. Number two, because it's not based on any specific real steel firearm, it opens them up to a higher degree of flexibility in how this gun is produced. Taking a look at the gun, it's very lightweight and it is completely made of a high quality polymer. And that's where the P in TAC 41P comes from. This guy's slim body up front with M-lock slots on the 369 position. And you know, to be honest, not just up front, but the whole gun profile is very slim, completely. And it feels really good in my hand. To give you some frame of reference, well, check this out. Let's do a simple comparison. This is the Amoeba Striker AST-01 in OD. While they do share some similarities when it comes to design philosophy, allow me to point out how drastically sleeker and thinner the TAC 41P is compared to the AST-01. Next up, I wanna talk about the ergonomics of the guns as I shoulder and hold them. Now I don't tout myself to be some kind of top tier, you know, special forces airsoft sniper, but I would say I have a pretty good command when it comes to sorting out good ergonomics when it comes to shooting. If I look at the TAC 41P, even though it follows a very modern and sleek sniper rifle design, as well as the AST-01, there are some things that stand out even though it looks like, well, it just boring fanfare. Let me give you some context of what I just said. Now, I have talked extensively about the AST-01 in times past, and I did say I enjoyed the ergonomics of the AST-01 a lot, actually. But there are a few things I would like to point out that is greatly addressed by the TAC-41P. First, let's talk about the angle. On the AST-01, the angle is relatively straight, just like the TAC-41P. However, on the AST-01, the distance between where my grip surface is to the trigger is quite far. 
oftentimes I feel like I have to ride up on the gun up top here to, to really make me feel like I'm securely over my trigger when I shoot. Now, it's not that big of a deal if you're just running and gunning. However, if you're scoped in for extended periods of time, you're gonna have a bit of fatigue. On the TAC-41P, the gripping surface and trigger distance is remarkably closer. It feels very comfortable for me to hold my hand here. Everything falls right into place. The grip surface here where my palm gets shelved onto is concaved in and it fits nicely. Now, on the AST-01, it's a relatively flat surface. Again, by no means uncomfortable, but if I have to compare the two, the TAC-41P does shelf your hand much nicer. Not to mention the cutout here where your thumb rests. Let me be honest with you. It's a small detail, but how curved it is here just allows you to sh put your thumb up here comfortably. Whereas the AST-01, it's angular and it's quite shallow. And your thumb has a hard time resting here comfortably where it naturally wants to ride up on the gun, causing your hand to tilt forward and get caught up in this adjustment piece here where the fatigue usually will come from. But while I have your attention in this portion of the gun, as my hand sits here, all my fingers and where my grip surface is, it's very natural. My index finger is right underneath this enlarged bolt nub for me to flick this up and get this ready to fire. The safety is enlarged. My thumb is naturally under it. It's a little stiff, but that's how we like it. Finally, moving towards the rear of the rifle on the TAC-41, you will also find an adjustable cheek riser and you can quickly move it by turning this knob right here. And you can adjust it to your heart's content. It won't be a silverback sniper rifle unless you can adjust the shouldering distance by adding spacers right here. Internally is where the TAC-41P makes its money. To start, we once again look to the front of the gun. It features a free float barrel, and this is pretty cool. Now in real steel shooting, a free float barrel adds to the overall accuracy of your gun, especially when it's a sniper rifle or a bolt gun platform as such. Now, without getting into too many nitty gritty points about why it's more accurate, the long story short is, since there's no other contact points to the barrel itself, you won't get extra obstruction. Now, an airsoft, this is an outer barrel. But the benefit is because the body and the barrel are not touching, if I were to have to push it up against something or if I have to set it on something, you're not going to cause the barrel to move or warp, whereas it's only the body that is moving. Now, we've seen VSR-10s. If you push it against something, the barrel would shift. It would shift left or shift right, causing you to miss shots because you're going that way or, or that way because your barrel is crooked. This takes all of that out of it. So if I push this against the wall, it's the body that's going to move with the force of wherever I'm applying it and the barrel stays straight. The inner barrel is 510 millimeters long at 6.05 millimeters in diameter. It uses an AEG type barrel with AEG bucking. GBB type barrel and GBB type buckings are coming at a later date. The threads in the barrel are 24 millimeters CW, that's clockwise, and works with other Desert Tech type muzzle devices such as suppressors. The hop up dial is located right here at the base of the other barrel and can be adjusted even if you have a scope mounted on it. Each adjustment is fine and detailed with an audible clicking sound as it moves. The nine settings move a total of zero to 0 0.75 millimeters and locks in. This prevents any overturning. The bullet holds an incredibly large volume of air at 41 cc's, second only to the Desert Tech HTI but that's a 50 cal. This is fantastic as it allows for more air to push out your BBs, which translate into more consistent shots downrange. The air seal on this gun is also fantastic. You get low to no wastage, and you can show that by operating this bolt, and with my finger over the barrel, and I'm gonna pull the trigger, and check this out. That was the rest of the air. It was encapsulated inside.
Final point about the Bolt is it does not have a bolt slam prevention feature. Now, what does that mean? If I were to take this bolt and charge it and leave it here, if I pull the trigger, the bolt's gonna wanna go straight forward. Now that's called bolt slamming. Like for example, I'm gonna hold this here so I don't break anything. See, as I pull the trigger, it automatically goes forward, right? Now, it doesn't have this bolt slam prevention feature, but what it does do is, let's say I put this gun in battery. Now it's charged and ready to shoot, see? What this does do though, is now I can decock the gun by pulling the bolt back out. And I'm gonna slowly send the bolt back forward. And I've decocked the gun. I think this is a pretty cool feature to be honest. Now before we go shoot the gun, I do wanna talk about the feeding mechanism of the TAC-41P. Now, first let's look at the magazine. Pull the lever here and the magazine comes out. This is the magazine, a 48 round magazine. My goodness, that's a lot of BBs <laughs> for a lot of shooting. So in the future, you may only need to carry two or three of these small guys and you can do a lot of gaming out there. Now, after I said that, let's talk about the feeding system. The feeding system of this gun is a feed tube style feeding system. What does that mean? That means the moment you insert this magazine, 19 rounds will be loaded into the gun, into the feeding tube. So when you fire a shot, a BB that is already in the chamber gets sent out and replaced with another one, kind of like a ramp, right? So imagine one here, one here, this one goes out, the bottom BB pushes one up, and then another BB is chambered. So that's how this feeding mechanism works. Now, I hear your questions and your concerns. Hey, what if I eject my magazine? Am I gonna get BBs everywhere? Are they just gonna leak? Don't worry, Silverback has managed to encapsulate all your BBs in the gun itself. So you're not gonna be running around with leaky BBs. Oh, 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 actually, sorry, I almost forgot. It wouldn't be a Silverback sniper rifle if there wasn't some clever way for you to disassemble this gun. And there is, which means less for me to do because it's time for a Gambit's Guide. Take it away, Gambit. I'm using 0 0.2 gram BBs. Here we are at Gun Range Zero and I got a TAC-41P set up right there. Now today we're gonna to talk about accuracy, but we're also gonna run it through a bit of a ringer. We're gonna see how fast it can shoot as well. Now I know it's a sniper rifle, you're not gonna be laying down suppressive fire, but it's for that situation where you may need to hit a couple of rapid follow-up shots in case the guy may not have called his hit, or God forbid, we're all human and we miss. Now I did bring out the AST-01, in OD Green uh, to compare it to the TAC-41P today and see how they stack up. Now bear in mind, the TAC-41P is almost double the price of the AST-01. So in today's shooting competition, it in no way reflects about one gun or the other. I just feel like it'll be fun to have a comparison as to how they both perform when put next to each other. Let's go. All right, I'm scoped in. Sending it. Nice trajectory. This bolt is so smooth. What this really helps me with is staying on target and staying scoped in. So easy. And like I talked about ergonomically, I don't feel any fatigue whatsoever. I don't feel like my arm needs to ride. My hand doesn't need to ride forward. Trigger breaks nicely. Let's 
the joy of a rifle to shoot. Let's take a look at those results. I don't think I need to say anything more. That was my first shot to kind of see where my hold was. After that, one, two, three, four, five. Do I, I, I don't think there's much else I need to say. The TAC 41P is a shooter. All right, AST-01, let's see how she shoots. I miss being behind this gun. Until you use a short throw lever like this, you forget how short the travel of, of these Striker series sniper rifles are. Let's take a look at those results. Now I did shoot a little bit more. I wanted to make sure I got my hold correctly, but I mean, look at the grouping as you can see here. Little bit of spread, not as tight as the TAC 41P, but this is no indictment on the AST-01. I mean, given the fact that it's half the price and it can perform quite well, I have to say huge props to Amoeba for actually producing quite a good product. So the Striker really does live up to the hype. Now it's time for the speed shooting part where I'm gonna throw it back to the TAC 41P. Shooter ready, stand by, go. All right, so this is the underside of my original accuracy uh, results. As you can see, here's the accuracy portion, and here's the speed shooting portion. One, two, three, four. Yes, there's only four because I missed one, totally whiffed. But even when I was shooting as fast as I can, accuracy is quite good on this thing, a little bit off to the side, but hey, I'm trying to go quick. Now to the amoeba. Shoot, are you ready? Go. All right, once again, we're using the bottom side of our accuracy test. And you can see one, two, three, four, five. Now, these holes are pretty much where I thought it would be with two very close in the middle and there's was a bit of a spread. One thing I do have to say, like the short stroke bolt from the AST-01, I mean, that's where the money is. If you really wanna be going fast, I mean, you're a sniper, I don't know why you necessarily want to go fast, but if you really have to do a follow-up one, follow-up two shots, I mean, that's your money maker right there and that's really where it shines. But with that said, the TAC-41P, it was no slouch. In fact, both guns performed exactly where I thought they would before I even stepped on the range in terms of accuracy and overall performance. So I am pleasantly surprised that number one, see the AST-01 perform quite well and the TAC-41P is, well, everything it's lived up to be. Now, back to the studio. You know, during the whole time when I was talking about this gun, I still found it very difficult to wrap my head around the fact that this is a silverback sniper rifle all up until I shot it and that's when it kind of dawned on me wow this gun is something special but before we get into the wrap-up here hey why don't you check out other silverback sniper rifles that are actually bullpups the SRS and the HTI click on the card above or find them in the description below you know when I started this review I started with pouring one out for the homies and referring to the VSR 10 but throughout this review have you realized that I really not talk too much about the VSR-10, whereas I did a whole lot of comparing this gun to the AST-01. Well, I did that because you just cannot compare this to the VSR-10. You can't compare it to the VSR-10 simply because unless you wanna spend a lot of your hard-earned cash upgrading that VSR-10, you're just not gonna get the performance you see right here. Even if you live in a country that requires low FPS, traditionally, that's really, really where the VSR-10 is gonna shine. But 
with attack photo MP, I would imagine you just throw a lower power spring in there and you would instantly be eating the VSR 10's lunch. You'd have it beat at its own game. Like I said, others have come before trying to beat the VSR 10 at being a VSR 10. And to be honest, they're just fancy versions of the same thing. Little reinforcements here, little upgrades there, but at the end of the day, they're just a VSR 10. And that's why they, they just can't live up to saying that, oh, well, they're better than a VSR 10 in any way, shape or form. With the TAC 41P though, well, they've gone their own direction. They have their own ecosystem. They have their own hop-up unit. They have their own feed ramp style. They have their own bolt design. And then how large that volume of air is within this gun, not to mention the modernization of the rifle itself. This has gone in a different way and is succeeding now. Now with everything I just said, I'm not trying to lay a beat down on the VSR-10. What I'm trying to say is the TAC-41P is new and has gone its own direction. Think about it like this. VSR-10s are like the JDM guys or the PC guys of the airsoft world. That gun allows you to build something really special from the ground up. The TAC-41P would be like a BMW. Great out of the box performance, fantastic. But then if you upgrade it a little bit more, you're really going to be able to supercharge this gun. And I cannot wait to see what Silverback is going to do to supply this gun with even more goodies in the future. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you still think the VSR 10 got some juice like my boy Tom Brady? Or you think the TAC 41P is going to be the new hotness, kind of like Pat Mahomes, but enough football. Let me know your thoughts. In the comment section below and guys the tac 41 p right now is on pre-order on our online store and you can find this and the vsr 10 and the ast01 at www.railfaresoft.com if you thought this video was cool give us a like if you enjoyed it share it with your friends and if you haven't done yet subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know every time we upload a new video and until the next one guys have a good one